So into stock, we have a Mercedes E-Class. It's a three litre E350 CDI Sport Auto. It's the coupe as well. It's really good looking shape. Very, very nice car. Looks a million dollars. Um, it's done 76,639 miles. It's a 2009 on an 09 plate. Fuel economy, urban 31.7, extra urban 50.4, and combined is 41.5. Nought to 60 time of 6.7 seconds. Top speed of 155 miles an hour out of a 231 brake horsepower, 24 valve engine. Um, road tax, six months, 143 pounds, and 12 months is 260. Really, really high spec car. Uh, very, very well equipped. I'll just show you around it. We've got uh, Xenons on the front there. We've got front parking sensors, and that's an optical display inside as well, the Mercedes Parktronic. High pressure headlamp wash. The big Merc grille. The five twin spoke alloys, and they're the AMG ones. Got power folding door mirrors, it's the blue efficiency, privacy glass, the chrome strip up the side, and also the, the sill protector there. Got uh, electric boot release off the key, and also there's a little switch just inside the driver's door there. Bags of room in there. You've also got two little handles here that you can flip the back seat down and load through. But as you can see, all my camera equipment in here, bags of room. The chrome strip along the boot here, and also, again, the reversing sensors in the rear bumper here, the, again, the rear Parktronic. You can see there's a display just inside on the roof, which you can see in your mirror, your rear view mirror when you're reversing. I don't know why I'm even doing this or trying, uh, but uh, whenever I get in the back of one of these four-seater coupes, it always reminds me of uh, a video of a guy called Super Dave Osborne I saw, who uh, <laughs> who went in a car and then, then supposedly a car crusher. I'll, I'll try and remember to cut a, a, a clip in to show you later. So I wouldn't say there's bags of room in here. It's it's only for two people. There's a petition in the centre here with uh, cup holders in the centre and a, an oddments tray. The integrated uh, headrest, so that's uh, you, you can't move that up and down. You have got rear electric windows as well, and it, it's a pillarless coupe, so that's a good feature. You can have all the all the back down here. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll put the seat back. Uh, I'm dreading doing this, to be honest. I, it won't come back anyway. That's that's all right. You've got to sit in the driver's seat to, to put it back. So if there was a mid, if there was a midget driving this car, I, I'd have plenty of legroom. Otherwise, I wouldn't be so sure. But it's the the car's beautiful. The back seats are like new. It's just a very very nice car, um, and it, it's a lot of car for the money. It really is a, a a, a big flash for the little cash. It's a it's a nice thing. That's like torture. <laughs> I'll just take you for a ride in it. That's the Mercedes key there as you can see. There's no blade, just slots into the dash there. Recognises the key turns on. You're then presented with these, uh, the seat belt. Nice and comfortable car. Um, this car has got a digital service history. Now, it's got all the bills here, and that, honestly, that's that's the digital service history. It's taken me an hour to put it all together, really, going through all the invoices. Uh, but you can see that it tells you it's electronic service sheet the only place you can find a date there is the 21st of the 6th there's no details of who did it unless you've got the invoice and if you've got the invoice of course you've got to redact all the, the names and usually it's a company car so the invoices go to the accountant who then claims the VAT back so the invoices invariably get, get lost however on this one right at the back there's a, a stamp so we've got that uh, then 
course go through all the others and they're just kind of service sheets here now what what I thought would be a great idea instead of having all these and and to save paper what about if the manufacturers just gave you kind of a, a little book like so with spaces and every time you had it service the, the service reception receptionist put the date and the mileage down and just stamped it in the right place so you, you it, I mean that, that seems like a brilliant idea and a, and, a, and a great way forward save all this paper and all the messing about checking um, so well done well done Mercedes and all everybody else who has digital service history it, it's it's a it's a joke so here's what I managed to put together this morning so 21st of 6 2010 at 14566 miles uh, Mercedes-Benz Wakefield 21st of 6 2011 29094 miles Mercedes-Benz Preston 18th of 6 2012 39780 miles Mercedes-Benz Preston again and then 16th of 9th 2013 <coughs> at 50,197 miles Mercedes-Benz Blackpool and uh, I used to work there when it was called Speeds and it looks like the same person as, as Stamp the Book who was there when I was there and I was amazed to see that the service schedule just had 50,000 miles exactly but uh, anyway they, they've put the correct they've put the exact mileage which is good um, 24th of 10th 2014 at 56681 that's Thornley's Mercedes Specialist just up the road from us here it's been a local car for the last few years 19th of 2nd 2016 62,831 miles again Thornley's Mercedes Specialist and I know he was trained at uh, Sicily Continental and, and any, any any tough jobs any good diagnostic Mercedes uh, jobs that, that we couldn't do we always took to him and, it, and he, he fixed them for us so I, I can thoroughly recommend him but then 9th of 6 2017 at 68,718 miles northwest autocare cars done 76,642 and as you know we well you may know we use northwest autocare and they'll be doing another service before it goes out so the cars finished in uh, white and the, the exact name just escapes me probably polar white and it's got uh, black leather upholstery with the uh, contrast stitching it's a really really nice car it's got the proper the, the gear stick in the in the proper place and not here where you expect your wiper stalk to be and I'll just take you for a ride in it now here we go before we go power folding door mirrors and we've got at the front there I probably won't be able to see because it's not headrest with two little stalks I can't put mount my camera in the middle so I've just got a camera at either side so hopefully from this camera or that camera you'll be able to see that display in the in the center there and there's nothing behind me so if I just avoid these pigeons and then aim at this bollard There you go. You'll you'll see it's um, it's showing that you're near an o an object. So uh, and it's the same here in this in the rear view mirror. There's one mounted in the roof, and you can see when you're getting close. And it also indicates which side you're getting close, just in case you don't know. Lovely cars. I've got to be honest. I I didn't like this shape when it first came out. It uh, reminds me of an upturned boat, but it's really grown on me, <laughs> so uh, I, I do now anyway. Uh, nice driving position, sport seats. We've got here electric, just uh, electric height and height adjustable, and the backrest, the seat squab. You have to pull a lever, like in the old seats, to move backwards and forwards indicators and wipers on the left here and you've also got cruise control here multi-function steering wheel which again I should have checked no doubt there'll be no because I want to stop here there's always a million cars coming that way 
But whenever I want to stop and just demonstrate something, there's a gap that indicates so people know where we're going. Here we go. Now I, I do love the way these drive. This car's got Dunlops all round as well. The the five double spoke AMG alloy wheels, which uh, good looking wheels finish the car off outside. Nice and quiet. No, uh, no bumps or knocks. Just put the aircon on. Put that on low. Just test that. Yep, that's nice and cold already. So, we'll knock the fan off. Keep it on cold. We've got sat nav, Bluetooth hands free. And then we've got paddle shift on, on, on the top here, so I can change up and down, uh, plus and minus, minus on the left. Um, I sold I sold a Mercedes uh, C-Class to a friend of mine who has no interest in cars whatsoever. He doesn't care just to get from A to B. And because he's a, he's a friend of mine, I, I didn't do a, perhaps a normal handover. He'd never had one before, not driven an automatic for ages, and uh, he'd switched the, switched the radio on, was listening to the, a tune in his car and decided he wanted it up, or wanted to turn it down. So he clicked the minus sign here, he thought these were the volume controls, and, it, and immediately changed down a couple of gears. So uh, those, those are shifters, or as Jeremy, Jeremy Clarkson would call them, flappy paddles. But, uh, You've, you've really no need to use them to be honest once it's in automatic in drive uh, you, you've no need to use them you can change it to manual here if you click manual the display changes there and then it will only change from the paddle shift or alternatively you can change up and down like so by knocking the gearbox or the gear selector to the left to change down and to the right towards you to change up What usually happens here if you try and overtake there's a big queue around the corner and then you can't get in which we'll probably see these people do and then uh, then there's nearly an accident when people want to go up the M6 yeah there you go he's just cut in but uh, he was fortunate Concertina in here. There you go. What an engine this is. <laughs> it's just awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's a middle sized car, really, but the, the torque on this diesel engine is, is just superb. lights on green again there so I still can't show you the height and reach adjustable steering wheel we'll just check the dormers click that over to the right yep yeah, that's that's working fine click over to the left let's see and we're clear again here so up the M6 the handling really is superb in this car I, I would say a lot better than the old e-classes which to be fair just used to be built like battleships it wasn't about handling it was just about being in everybody else's face I think <laughs> I've got a Mercedes Benz get out of my way so Let's just see. There's a the handle. There's a place for for a phone in there, which obviously nobody uses these days. But it is Bluetooth hands-free. You've also got, if you click to auxiliary on the audio, there's a couple of leads in there. Uh, it looks looks like the old iPod lead, but I'm sure you'd be able to get um, a, a new iPhone lead adapter 
or you can plug into a what, an auxiliary in socket which you'd be able to play your tunes through the uh, through the system here the car is really nice and just let's just uh, see Yep, that's so that's one touch cruise. Just knock that up, and I do know it works as a speed limiter as well. I can never remember which way around it is, usually, get it wrong. Here we go, let's let this guy <coughs> pull in. And, uh, join the traffic. So, 70 miles an hour at just over. Now I don't I don't think we're in top there by any means, but um, so I'll I'll discount that really. Would have been doing a lot less revs if if I yeah if I'm I'm knocking it down now and the the revs are really really going down. So that, that was a um, I won't get up to seventy, but I would imagine it would be doing round about 2,000 revs but that, that is a guess obviously I'm, I'm cocked up with the traffic so nice black leather upholstery the uh, contrast stitching brushed aluminium in the dash door cards and also around the gear tunnel here got a little bit there just finishes it off on the steering wheel really really nice driving position Xenon's outside. We've got the pillarless windows, which I can't really show you because I, I can't put the back ones down. Oh yes, I can actually. I can put the back ones down, but you, but you won't be able to see it. Um, right. Now we always have to stop at these traffic lights. They're always on red. Nice test of the steering round here. Let's just see if I've got time. <laughs> it's changed. Never mind. Here we go. So I'll just show you that it's it's a real good test of the steering round here. Sharp bends, undulating, left, right, right, left. As I've said before, I, I think the constructors had a load of tarmac left, so they, they meandered about up here. Right, let's have a look. So there we go. Height and reach adjustable, there we go. Just a catch underneath there. And uh, the display, we've got fuel gauge on the left, far left. Then a clock, which is unusual to see in the display. There we go. Just that's acceleration is just lovely. Um, speedometer in the centre. Your information displays in the centre of the speedo. The, the speedo's on the, on the outside, so it tells you it tells you what gear you're in. It has a coffee cup reminder there to tell you to stop for a drink if you going too long since you're tired outside temperature your mileometer and trip counter and then you've got a smaller rev counter and then your coolant your engine coolant temperature gauge all right we'll just again we've got couple of uh, left to right just test the steering for knocks and suspension it's a bit bumpy here and when you're loading the steering wheel you can usually feel any cracks or if there's anything wrong but uh, nothing is this is MOT until the 2nd of May next year That's that's just really really nice. I'll, 
Oh God, this guy doing a U-turn there. What a knob. Now he's pulled out in front of that car. Ah, dear me. Okay, so I'll uh, finish the test drive there. And I'll just show you uh, when we get back to the garage how to pay your mobile, how to delete a mobile and how to set the sat-nav. Uh, 